So hopefully if you've been listening to these in order, you listened to my segment that talked about the fact that when, when water is in its solid state, it has a lot of intermolecular bonds. When water is in, in its liquid state, it has fewer. And when water is a water vapor or a water gas, there are no intermolecular bonds. So this thing called latent heating, actually then, is the amount of energy that you need to zap um, um, a solid in order for it to liquefy. Now, when we zap solid water, we call ice, um, with thermal energy, or with most likely, um, what it's doing is breaking some of those intermolecular bonds, picking up a little bit of kinetic energy, and now it's in its liquid state. When we take a liquid and we throw energy at it, that's called latent heat. Okay, both of those are called latent heat when we when we throw energy at material and it changes its physical phase. Actually, in this latter one, when I say when we throw latent energy at liquid to go ahead and break all of the intermolecular bonds, basically, and those cute little molecules then become a gas, um, that's called the latent heat of vaporization. This over here was called the latent heat of melting or latent heat of fusion, sometimes what they call it. So there's a certain amount of energy required, and usually the latent heat is given in energy per gram of material that's going to be change its physical phase. Okay, so we'll be talking more about latent heat. Now, maybe not as intuitive as as bonds are formed, we say. So in this case, um, that would be as matters going from either a gas to a liquid or matters going from a liquid to a solid. Those intermolecular bonds are being formed and it's losing some kinetic energy. Actually, energy is released during these physical physical phase changes. And so that, that's also called latent heat. And actually, I have a slide coming up to kind of put some quantitative numbers. The amount of energy that's either released during um, what that would be condensation as water vapor goes from um, as water goes from being a vapor to a liquid and as water goes from being a liquid to a solid we call that freezing energy is released so that's latent heat okay and that's an important player um, in our hydrological cycle because we talked about what is the hydrological cycle well it's water from the geosphere basically evaporating or transpiration Okay, and then um, becoming um, water moving into the um, atmosphere. And then we have, we're going to talk more about condensation within the atmosphere where water liquefies or water solidifies in the form of snow. And then we're going to talk about precip or precipitation would be a geospheric source where water is coming from the atmosphere to the geosphere. Okay, so um, physical phase changes in the, is important in the... Um, uh, hydrological cycle and energy is is and I have a few slides to kind of summarize this but energy is required from solid for a solid to go to a liquid and for a liquid to go to a gas and energy is released from when a gas goes to a liquid or when a liquid goes to a solid and actually it's this and I'll I'll remind you of this later but it's actually in 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 storm clouds when water goes from being a vapor to being a liquid, a whole bunch of energy is released, and that actually is what dry is the energy associated with our thunderstorms. Okay, so latent heat is the energy that is associated with a phase change, a physical phase change. And what are the three physical phases? Solid, liquid, and gas. But remember, energy can be absorbed or is absorbed or required to go from a solid to a liquid or liquid to a gas. And energy is released um, when matter goes from a gas to a liquid or liquid to a solid. So I put these together to kind of, there are two slides here. This first slide is where latent heat energy is required or absorbed. So that would be, as I mentioned, water going from a solid to a liquid or from a liquid to a vapor or a gas. So latent heat is generally energy required to change its physical phase. Um, so latent heat of fusion is what we associated with melting when water goes from a solid to a liquid. Latent heat uh, vaporization is when water is evaporating. Water is going from a liquid to a gas. Now one thing, physical phase change, I haven't mentioned yet, but it happens all the time, maybe more than you think, is where water goes straight from being a solid to being a vapor. And we call that sublimation. 
when water goes from being a solid to being a vapor. And there's a certain amount of energy required for that, too. Um, an example I like to tell people is that a um, long time ago, we used to not have ice makers associated with our freezers. And so we would take a plastic um, ice tray, put water in it, and then put that ice tray with liquid water into our freezer to go ahead and for our ice cubes to solidify. And we could have ice that way. But if you weren't, I won't say careful, um, if, if you say put your ice tray in there to go ahead and make ice cubes and you left it in there for a couple of weeks, there's a chance that um, when you came back a couple of weeks later, basically your ice was basically down to nothing. And so what had happened is within your freezer, you know, within the, I don't know how long it takes, maybe three to four hours that you put it in there two weeks ago, your liquid water went ahead and solidified. And then over time, basically, your solid ice sublimed into your freezer. So it went from being a solid to being a vapor in your freezer and maybe added to some of your freezer burn that neat that you saw. So that's, a, I think, a good example of sublimation. So now this slide focuses on latent heat or latent energies that where um, bonds are formed and actually energy is released. So um, you kind of have to maybe flip it around in your mind, I'm not sure. But um, examples of where bonds are formed and energy is released, I mentioned the energy associated with our thunderstorms is um, the energy associated with condensation. When gas, when water goes from being gas to being a liquid, we call that latent heat of condensation. And then when water is in its liquid state and it solidifies, energy is released too. That's latent heat of fusion. And then just like we had sublimation, we have something kind of similar where bonds are formed, where um, water goes straight from being a gas to being a solid. And a really good example of that is frost. Okay, let's say um, throughout the course of the night, your temperatures drop to um, 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, 32 degrees Fahrenheit is freezing, right? So 20 degrees Fahrenheit, you get up in the morning and your little cute little bla blades of grass have solid frost on them. Well, I guarantee you, and where did that frost come from, by the way? That frost is solid water. That came from gaseous water. I guarantee you that your water did not go from being a vapor or a gas to being a liquid to being a solid. Instead, what it did, and I like to use the word deposition, instead what it did was... Um, water vapor deposited on your blades of grass or wherever the frost was going to form. So your author has, I think, a good um, figure here. By the way, poor polar bear, right? But where you see that polar bear who's on a little bit of ice, um, um, you can, we see all three, we don't necessarily see them, but there are all three phases of water there. He's standing on solid water. Okay, there's, um, we might kind of see some haze in the background. That's water, probably liquid. And then there's water vapor there too. So um, I mentioned your author has this figure. I think this is a good figure. Uh, I don't know if you can, how well you can see it, but I'll kind of bring up my pen. And yes, those cats are just fine. <laughs> okay, here's water in its solid state. And we talked about how water in its solid state, although it has a little bit of kinetic energy, it doesn't have a lot, and it has just got crazy amount of intermolecular bonds with its, with its neighbor um, water particles. So here's water in its solid state, here's water in its liquid state, and actually water is a unique solid in that it, um, it what we say, kind of collapses from a crystalline solid to a liquid state. But um, emphasizing now the, I don't know if you probably can't tell it, but the number of intermolecular bonds there, when water is a liquid, there's fewer intermolecular bonds, but there's definitely intermolecular bonds. When water is a gas over here or vapor over here, that's my favorite physical phase, those gas particles are just bouncing around. All gases do that, including water vapor. So latent heat of, um, latent heats look like this. Whereas water goes from a, from a solid to a liquid, it takes, and this is really small, but it takes about 80 calories per one gram of ice you want to melt.
Okay. Now, we know that we can go ahead and water will change from its liquid state to its solid state and coincidentally 80 calories of energy will be released per one gram of liquid water that goes ahead and solidifies. So it's 80 and 80. Okay. Um, these would be the latent heats of um, fusion. Okay. Um, all right. So let's go over here to water being a liquid to being, to being converted from its liquid state to its gaseous state. Notice it takes about 600 calories, and I've seen kind of a range there on that one. But your, this figure says it takes about 600 calories to take one gram of liquid water, pump it with 600 calories, and whew, that one gram of liquid water now is a vapor. Okay, Now, when that vapor what we say condenses to form a liquid again, 600 calories of energy are released for every one gram of gas that's liquefied. That's the latent heat of condensation and evaporation. So the other two lines would be our, um, our sublimation and our deposition. So sublimation actually, and I don't know, I'd have to kind of double check how this is, but Basically, if you take 80 plus 600, you get 680, and that is the energy per gram of water, um, uh, per gram that would be required to go ahead and take water in its solid state and take it straight to its gaseous state, skipping the liquid state. Okay, that's the heat of sublimation. Down here, we have the, the heat, latent heat of deposition. Again, it's 680 to 1. So just to kind of finish up, here, I just would remind you that when you see something kind of hazy, okay, that's something other than a vapor making that hazy. And so um, it's something other than a vapor or a gas. So this looks like fog. Actually, fog can be described as basically a clouded ground state. Um, so I would assume that these are cute little liquid particles. Okay, we had some sort of condensation happened. We had some sort of gas going to form a liquid. And remember that this energy was released during this. If you're familiar with the term um, um, endothermic and exothermic, we would call this exothermic. Okay, energy is released, the latent heat of energy. So, yeah, the latent heat of, um, I'm sorry, the latent heat of condensation. So over here we have um, frost, and I kind of mentioned frost. Frost is probably what we call a, a type of deposition, where water is going straight from being a gas to being a solid. And um, it's kind of fresh in my mind, but remember that we said that the latent heat of um, deposition is about 680 calories per gram of water vapor that's going to go ahead and um, um, deposit and form a solid. So that's the amount of energy, again, released. We'll go ahead and put a number up here. Would we say that um, 600 calories um, per gram of water vapor that goes from being a gas to a liquid, um, 600 calories for every one gram of water vapor that goes ahead and liquefies, 600 calories are released.